In 6.7, we look at solving rational equations. So the major change here is we're no longer only looking at expressions. We are now going to have rational expressions, but involved in an equation. And so to solve a rational equation, the techniques are very different from simplifying a rational expression. So first and foremost, we need to understand the concept of a least common denominator. And we have talked about this already. The least common denominator in this equation is 3 times x minus 2. And then when you're solving an equation, you have an advantage over simplifying expressions. And the advantage is that we can multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. And this is the technique that we're going to use. So when we multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD, we get this. And now what we can do is we can cancel common factors. So keep in mind, when you multiply, you can always think of that as a fraction. And what we're going to do is identify common factors to cross cancel. So in the first expression here, we can cancel the 3 here with the 3 here. In the second expression, we can cancel the x minus 2 with the x minus 2. And on the other side of the equation, there's nothing to cancel, and that's okay. We're just going to end up multiplying 5 times 3 here. And so now we're going to multiply what we have left over. So in the first part of the equation here, we have 2 times the quantity x minus 2. And then we have, in the next part of the equation, we have 3 times x. And on the other side, we have 15 times x minus 2. Now this is just a linear equation. And so to solve a linear equation, we will distribute wherever we can. And after distributing here, we end up getting 2x minus 4 plus 3x is equal to 15x minus 30. Next, we'll combine like terms. So on the left-hand side, we have 5x minus 4 equals 15x minus 30. And uh, what I like to do here is subtract 5x from both sides because I prefer to keep my x's positive. And this gives us negative 4 equals 10x minus 30. Add 30 to both sides. And we get 26 equals 10x. And then dividing both sides by 10, we end up getting x equals 26 over 10. And remember, that can be reduced if you divide each of the numerator and denominator by 2. You get x equals 13 fifths. And we can just leave our answer like that. I do want to mention that 13 divided by 5 is actually equal to 2.6. Okay, but this is the answer that I prefer. Now, one other thing that I want to mention, anytime you're solving a rational equation, you always have to be concerned with your answer because sometimes you'll find an answer that actually doesn't work. And the reason for this is because in the beginning, if you look at your original equation, you have a restricted value of x here. No matter what happens in this problem, x can never equal 2. So you need to keep that in mind. No matter what happens, x cannot be equal to 2. So what that means is that in the end, if you end up getting the restricted value as your answer, then you need to say that you have no solution there. So um, I'll keep talking about that in each and every problem, but at the beginning of the problem, you need to think about your restricted values to make sure that one of your answers is not one of those restricted values. Let's look at some other examples. 
So in this example, we have another rational equation. And the first thing we want to do is find the least common denominator. And in order to do that, we need to factor. And so this denominator here needs to be factored. Now, thankfully, x squared minus 1 is the difference of two squares. And actually, its factors are these two, x minus 1 times x plus 1. So we'll go ahead and do that factorization. And so here it is. So all we did is this factorization here. And now I can identify that the least common denominator is actually x minus 1 times x plus 1. And along with that, we're going to remember that no matter what, x cannot be equal to 1, and also x cannot be equal to negative 1. And that's because these numbers will make one of these denominators equal to 0. So next, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by the least common denominator here. So when we do that, we get the following. And once again, keep in mind that if you want, you can put a 1 under each one of these to help you see that you're multiplying fractions. And the other thing to keep in mind is the whole point of doing this is that all of your denominators should cancel out completely. So now we're going to cancel common factors. So in the first term of this equation, we have x minus 1 and x plus 1 canceling out. In the next term, we have x minus 1 canceling out. And on the other side of the equation, we have x plus 1 canceling out. And after we do that cancellation, in the first term here, all we have left over there is negative x squared plus 10 plus... In the second term here, we have 3x multiplied by x plus 1 left over. And on the other side of the equation, we have 2x multiplied by x minus 1. And so the next step is to simplify. So we have negative x squared plus 10 plus, in the second term, we're going to distribute and doing that gives us 3x squared plus 3x. And on the other side, we also distribute. And this gives us 2x squared minus 2x. Now, this equation is a quadratic equation. You have x squared terms on both sides. So the first thing I'm going to do is just combine like terms. So on the left-hand side, we can do negative x squared plus 3x squared actually gives us positive 2x squared. And then we have positive 3x and positive 10. So that's just these terms here coming down. And you'll notice that I want to write those in descending order. And on the other side, we have 2x squared minus 2x. Those cannot be combined. And now when you solve a quadratic equation, you need to set it equal to 0. So we need to get these two terms over to the left-hand side. So what I'm going to do is subtract 2x squared from both sides and also add 2x to both sides. And when you do that, on the right-hand side you get 0, which is what we wanted. And on the left-hand side, notice now that these actually cancel out. So that means what we have left over here is 5x plus 10. And now notice this is no longer a quadratic equation. So that's going to happen sometimes. Sometimes it's going to seem like you have a quadratic equation. You know, you have these x squared terms. But in the process of solving, they will sometimes go away. So if that happens, it's not a big deal. We'll just subtract 10 from both sides, which gives us 5x equals negative 10. And then dividing both sides by 5, we get x equals negative 2. And this is our answer. And then remember, when you get your answer, you need to compare it to the restrictions that you had in the beginning. So let me just remind you. Let's bring it up here real quick. In the beginning, we had said that x cannot be equal to positive 1 or negative 1. 
So our answer is negative two, which means that we are in the clear. Negative two is okay. So this is our answer. So our next example is similar to the previous examples. Uh, first thing you need to do when you have a rational equation is you need to make sure all the denominators are in factored form. So we need to factor this trinomial. And uh, we will just do that without much explanation there. So here is that factorization. And after that, we can identify that the least common denominator is a plus 4 times a plus 5. And along with that, we know that a cannot be equal to negative 4. And a also cannot be equal to negative 5. So next, we need to multiply both sides by the least common denominator which is this expression here. And then our next step is canceling, cross-canceling, whatever we can. And again, you can put one here if you want. You don't have to do this step. And then if we cancel common factors, we end up with this. And now we just need to clean up this equation, writing down whatever is left over. So here in the first term, all we have left is 2a. Then we have a minus sign here. And then we have 3 times a plus 5. And on the right-hand side, we have 2 times a plus 4. So now let's go ahead and distribute. This gives us the following. Combine like terms. And then I will choose to add 1a to both sides, which gives us this. And then subtract 8 from both sides. and finally divide both sides by three. And our final answer is not a very attractive answer, but it's negative 23 over three. And then just a quick comparison. In the beginning, we said that A cannot be equal to negative four or negative five. And our answer is okay, because negative 23 over three is not one of those restrictions. So, you know, in summary here, um, it looks pretty impressive when you solve these problems, but it's actually not as complicated as it looks. You just have to be sure that you're very careful when you factor and you're very careful when you cancel and then watch for little things like when you have to distribute a negative, make sure that you have the correct signs. But as long as you do all the little things correctly, these problems aren't too difficult to solve. So here is one final example. In this problem, the first thing I need to do here is factor these two denominators. And after factoring, we can identify that the least common denominator is two times x plus two. And because we have x plus 2 in the denominator, that means no matter what happens in this problem, x cannot be equal to negative 2. So now let's go ahead and multiply by this least common denominator to both sides of the equation, which again means that you have to multiply it to all three terms. And so here is what we get. And then we can cross cancel and what we have left over in this first term here is just 3 in the second term notice we have x plus 2 and x minus 2 and to multiply these we need to put parentheses around the x minus 2 
And then finally, in the last term here, all we have is x minus 5. And so to complete this, we need to multiply this out. When you multiply x plus 2 times x minus 2, you should get x squared minus 4. This is a quadratic equation, so I need to do two things here. First of all, I'm going to combine like terms on the right-hand side. So negative 4 and negative 5 is negative 9. And I'm also going to put plus x as my next term there because we want to have it in descending order. And then after that, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides because we need it to be set equal to 0. And this time you have a legitimate quadratic equation. The x squared is still there. So that means we have to factor this. And I'll skip the details of factoring here, but you should get x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 3. And then, of course, the next step is we're going to take each one of these factors independently and set them equal to 0. And this allows us to rather easily solve each one of those smaller equations. And so we end up with two possible answers. Now, once again, we have to compare that with our restriction in the beginning. And our restriction is that x cannot be equal to negative 2. But we did not get negative 2. So each one of our solutions is actually a solution. So they both work. All right, so this concludes the section on solving rational equations. Now we're going to look at applications. So here in 6.8, we are going to use rational equations to solve problems. So one type of problem that we can solve is a problem involving work. So the situation here is that it takes a groundskeeper 45 minutes to prepare a baseball field, and his assistant takes 55 minutes to prepare the same field. So the assistant is a little bit slower than the groundskeeper. The question is, how long will it take them to prepare the field working together? So we can use a little intuition here. If the groundskeeper can do the job in 45 minutes, any help that person gets is going to reduce the amount of time that it takes. So we know that if they work together, it will take less than 45 minutes. But the question is, exactly how much time would it take them? So what we need to do here is consider the following basic concept. What we have is a rate of work, that is how fast they work, and we're going to multiply that rate by time, and this is going to equal the amount of work completed. This is the basic principle. And so what I'm going to do here is make a table to organize our information. And if you don't know how big to make your table, just make a table. You can always add or remove columns. That's not a big deal. And then we're going to put in some labels here. So what we have is the groundskeeper. So let me just call that person grounds. And then we have the assistant. And we'll call that person the assist. And then up here at the top of the table, we need some headings. So the first heading here is going to be our rate of work. And then we'll have our time. And then finally, the work completed. So now we need to fill in these boxes. So we need to think, what is the rate that the groundskeeper works? And this is the, probably the most important part of the problem. 
if the groundskeeper takes 45 minutes to do this job, then that means every minute the groundskeeper is doing 1 45th of the job. So again, if it takes 45 minutes, each minute the groundskeeper will do a small fraction of the total job. And that fraction is simply the reciprocal of the amount of time that it takes to do the complete job. So the groundskeeper does 1 over 45 of the job each minute. The assistant takes 55 minutes, and so each minute the assistant will do 1 over 55 of the job. Now the next question is, how much time will they be working? Well, this is what we don't know. But they're going to work together, and so they will work for the same amount of time. So I'm going to say the amount of time that the groundskeeper works is T, and the assistant works for the same amount of time, T. So T is what we don't know. T is what we're trying to figure out. Now the work completed by each person will be different. So even though they work for the same amount of time, the groundskeeper will do more work because the groundskeeper works faster. And the assistant will do less work because they work slower. So the work completed is rate times time. So 1 over 45 times t actually gives us t over 45. And 1 over 55 times t gives us t over 55. This is the fractional amount of work that each person will complete when the job is done. So this is sort of step one. You have to set up the problem, define your variables, etc. Now we need an equation. Well, the equation is really simple. It has to do with the work completed. If you take the fraction completed by the groundskeeper and you add it to the fraction completed by the assistant, you will always get one because there is one whole job to do here, and that job in this case happens to be preparing a baseball field. So we know that t over 45 plus t over 55 must be equal to 1. And now notice, that's a rational equation, and we need to solve that rational equation by the same techniques that we just used in the previous section. So first I'm going to factor. I'm going to say that 45 is 9 times 5, and 55 is 11 times 5. And then I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by the least common denominator, which is 9 times 5 times 11. And when you do that, you're going to distribute 9 times 5 times 11 to each of these fractions. And then of course, 9 times 5 times 11 on the other side of the equation. Well, what is that? Well, 9 times 5 is 45, and 45 times 10 is 450. So 45 times 11 should be 495. And now all we have to do is cancel the common factors. So 9 and 5 cancel here. 11 and 5 cancel here. And what we have left over is 11t plus 9t equals 495. That's 20t equals 495. And if we divide by 20, we end up getting a fraction there, 495 divided by 20. And you can do this two ways. You can reduce the fraction if you want. So 495 is 99 times 5, and 20 is 4 times 5, and then we can cancel the 5, which gives us 99 over 4. And then you can also give a decimal answer. 
And the decimal answer, 99 divided by 4, is 24.75. And normally, this is the answer that's better to give here. What that means is that if they work together, it's going to take them 24.75, and this is in minutes. And you could even say that 0.75 minutes is 45 seconds, but we won't worry about that. So a little bit less than 25 minutes, but make sure that you enter the, the answer exactly unless they ask for an approximation. So this is one application of rational expressions. Let's look at another one. So our next problem involves rate, time, and distance. The problem says Maria drives 120 miles to a family gathering. She returns home on the same route, but the return trip takes one hour longer due to traffic. If she drives 10 miles per hour slower on the return trip, again because of traffic, how fast did she drive in each direction? So this is a rate, time, and distance problem. So we'll go ahead and make a chart here. So this all pertains to Maria driving. Mar Maria drives to the family gathering, so we'll just write to, and then she also drives home. And for each of those, there is a rate, a time, and a distance. And what we're going to do is fill out the chart by starting with the easiest thing to fill in. So what we know is that she drives 120 miles to the family gathering, and she returns home on the same route. So it means that it's also 120 miles to come home. Next is the rate. We're being asked to determine how fast she drove in each direction. So the variable needs to be in our rate. We know driving to the gathering, she drove faster, and driving home, she drove slower. Now the way it's worded in the problem is that she drives 10 miles per hour slower on the return trip home. So that means if she drives X, miles per hour on the way to the fam family gathering, then she is driving x minus 10 miles per hour on the way home. Now, the x minus 10 should probably be put into parentheses just in case. The last column to fill out is the time. And we know something about the time. We know that it takes one hour longer when she drives home. However, we're not going to use that to fill out the time box. What we use for the time box is the equation rate times time equals distance. And if you divide that formula on both sides by r, you get time equals distance divided by rate. And so to fill out the time box here, the time it takes to drive to the family gathering is the distance divided by the rate. And so that is going to be 120 divided by x, and this will be in hours. And coming home, we do the same thing. It's the distance divided by the rate, and that is 120 divided by x minus 10, and that's also in hours. And now it is from the time column here that we are going to get our equation. So the return trip coming home takes one hour longer than driving to the family gathering. So what that means is if you take the time to the family gathering, and if you add one hour to that, that will give us the time coming home. That's the main idea, because again, 
the time coming home is one hour more than the time that it takes to drive to. So now all we have to do is fill that in. The time driving to the family gathering is 120 divided by x plus 1 equals the time coming home is 120 divided by x minus 10. And this is our rational equation that we need to solve. And so to solve this, we are going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator, which is x times x minus 10 on both sides. And keep in mind that this x and x minus 10 needs to be multiplied to both of these terms. And so really it looks like this. And now all we have to do is cancel out the common factors by cross-canceling. So this x cancels here. This x minus 10 cancels here. And what we have left over here is 120 times x minus 10. Plus, here we have x times x minus 10. And on the other side, we have 120 times x. And now we just need to do the math. So distributing, we get 120x minus 12,000, excuse me, 1,200, plus x squared minus 10x equals 120x. Notice that if you subtract 120x from both sides of the equation, notice that these cancel out. So that's a nice little uh, situation there. So what we have left over is x squared minus 10x minus 1200 equals zero. This is a quadratic equation. Let's bring it over here to factor. And the way we're gonna factor that is make a little magic x. I like to put the last term on the top, the middle number in the bottom. And we are looking for two numbers that we can multiply to get 1,200 and add to get negative 10. And that is negative 40 and positive 30. So this quadratic equation will factor into x minus 40 times x plus 30. And from there, we set each factor equal to 0, like we've done before. And this first equation will give us x equals 40. And the second equation will give us x equals negative 30. And keep in mind, x is how fast Maria drives to the family gathering. So that number can't be a negative number. So the solution is x equals 40. Now, going back to the beginning, it actually asks for how fast did she drive in each direction. So we need the speed going to the family gathering and we need the speed coming home. So to the family gathering is X and we know that X is 40. So coming home, she drove 10 miles per hour slower and 40 minus 10 is 30. So our final answer here is 40 miles per hour to the family gathering and 30 miles per hour coming home. So in our last problem, we look at a boating problem. So it says it takes six hours for a boat to travel 16 miles upstream and back. So six hours total. If the speed of the boat in still water is six miles per hour, what is the speed of the current? So the current refers to how fast the river is flowing. Okay. So let me make a chart. This is another rate, time, and distance problem. So we have a boat traveling upstream 
and downstream. And each of those will have a rate, a time, and a distance. Now, the fundamental concept here is that we are looking for the current, which is how fast the water is flowing. So let's let C equal the current. Now, the boat is capable of going six miles per hour, so it's a pretty slow boat. However, when you're going upstream against the water, the current is going to slow the boat down. So when the boat is traveling upstream, it will not go six miles per hour. It will go six miles per hour minus the current because you're going against the water. Now, coming downstream, it's the opposite effect. Going downstream, the boat will be traveling faster than six miles per hour. And its speed will be six miles per hour plus the current. Now the distance, the distance is 16 miles upstream and 16 miles downstream. So what is the time? Remember time is distance divided by rate. And so if we take each distance and divide it by its respective rate, the time going upstream will be 16 divided by six minus C and the time downstream will be 16 divided by six plus C. Now, what else do we know about the time? We know that it takes a total of six hours to go upstream and back, right? So upstream and downstream. So that means if you take these two times and add them together, you get the total time. And that total time is six hours. So this is the equation that we need to solve. To solve this equation, we're gonna multiply both sides by the least common denominator. And that least common denominator is six minus C times six plus C. And you know the drill now, what we need to do is cancel the common factors on both sides. And next is to simplify. So what we have here is 16 times six plus C plus 16 times six minus C is equal to, now over here, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply that out. That's gonna be 36 minus C squared because this is the difference of two squares. And then we have times six, and I'm just gonna put that in front there. So multiplying out, 16 times 6 is 96. 16 times C is positive 16C. Again, 16 times 6 is 96. 16 times negative C is negative 16C. And 6 times 36 is 216. And 6 times negative C squared is negative 6C squared. Combining like terms, these cancel out. So we get 96 plus 96, which is 192, equals 216 minus 6C squared. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the negative 6C squared to the left-hand side, and I'm going to subtract 216 from both sides, and negative 216 and positive 192 is negative 24. And that's the quadratic equation that we need to solve, which we can do by factoring out a six, and then we can factor what's left over. And then finally, we set each one of those factors equal to zero, and we get C equals two or negative two. And that's the speed of the current, so we're going to say that the speed of the current needs to be a positive number, so C equals 2. So the current is 2 miles per hour. 
Okay, you have a lot of work to do. Get started.